Now we also want to talk about the difference between natural and so-called surrogate keys. So this is what we want to understand and also then get some guidelines on how we should use them. So first of all, let's understand what are natural and surrogate keys. So if we have a look at our product dimension, this is the data, how it might come out of our system. And if we have a look at the product ID, we see that this is a alphanumerical number and they can be usually quite bulky and not really nice to handle. And they have a couple of disadvantages associated with them. Also, if we have a look at a transactional table, we can again see a bulky and it can be even a lot larger number. And this is just referring to the transaction ID basically that is generated by the source system. And now this is not the ideal way of how we have things managed in our data warehouse. And those are now our natural keys, but we don't want to usually leave it that way. So we have learned a natural key is just coming out of the source system. But now we can also generate our surrogate keys. And this is then nothing but a artificial key. And therefore it is sometimes also just called an artificial key. And like this, we can see that it's opposed to the natural key because we create those surrogate keys in our ETL process. And they are just very simple integer numbers. And also to understand that those are actually our surrogate keys, we have usually the suffix PK for primary key and FK for the foreign keys. And with those suffix, we can then usually immediately recognize that this is the surrogate key. And as mentioned, they are just created in the database or by the ETL tool. And also this process is very simple usually. So it's not a lot of additional work, but we have quite some benefits with that. So let's talk about what are actually those benefits and why should we create always those surrogate keys. So they are, as we've seen, much smaller in size. So we have with the natural keys, those very long and bulky alphanumerical strings. And if we just use the very small integer numbers, which can be just four bits in size, we have much less storage and also the performance with that, if we use that column as an index, it's much better in the performance. And also of course for the joints, those numbers work much better with a higher performance than those alphanumerical keys. And also we can handle dummy values a lot better. So if we have some missing values, for example, a date is not existing, then we can just simply create negative one or another very high number maybe that is just referring to our dummy values, which is just signaling that there is no value available and we can be more consistent with that. But also it's very practical if we have multiple source systems that all have different numbers and sometimes they can be then duplicates. If we have two systems and they both use the same number, then it's very good to use those surrogate keys to integrate those multiple source systems. And in general, it's much easier to administrate and update those values. And we also see that if we talk about the slowly changing dimensions, that it's better to have those surrogate keys for updating values, for example, in our dimensions. But also we sometimes don't even have a natural key available. And then it's also necessary to just auto generate those surrogate keys in our database or with our ETL tool. So this is just something that we should usually implement. And therefore, since I've already mentioned we should implement that, I just quickly also want to lay out a few practical guidelines. I've mentioned we should always use those surrogate keys in our tables if we have our primary key and of course also for our foreign keys. And 
In general, I would recommend that we use those surrogate keys both for fact and dimension tables. One exception is the date dimension. In the date dimension, we don't necessarily need to do that because it is very predictable and we can just also stick with our date key. So this works in this case as well, but for all of the other dimensions, we should always use surrogate keys. And now the question is also, do we keep our natural keys? And yes, in some cases, if we want, we can decide to keep them. If we have it, for example, in the dimensions, then it is usually not a lot of data. And then it's usually not a problem to just keep the natural keys as well, just in case we might need them. Usually we don't need them, but it is, if it's not a problem, we can also keep them. So this is something that we can do as well. So these are the very simple practical guidelines. So to summarize, a surrogate key is created in the ETL process by assigning just an integer number to every single row. And this is very helpful for us. And we should always use those surrogate keys in our tables.